On Monday the 16th of December 2019, Abley hosts Carl Shelton in the first round replay. This is a 2-0 victory, goals from George Sykes and Harry Gibbs. You scored in the FA Trophy, this one against Carl Shelton. Can you talk us through it? That was in the replay, I think. The yeah. first game was probably one of the best games I've ever played in um, at any level. Um, I don't know how we didn't win. Yeah, It could have been six or seven. Um, I, I missed chances, Alex missed chances. Uh, I remember Connor saying to me, sort of about 70th minute, if we don't win this, I'm going to kill the Perrier. <laughs> which I thought was it was a bit out of order, but we ended up drawing and obviously having to go back and, and uh scored sort of a good header early on, which sort of calmed us down a bit, I think. And then I think Harry scored, I think he both scored the yeah, second yeah. one. Um and then from there I think again we was pretty comfortable considering there was a league above and they were a very good side as well. So that goal I've been told it meant quite a lot to you. Can you tell us why? Uh I think that was I think my younger cousins had, had, were coming to watch because they'd literally just, I think that afternoon, they had to go and put their dog down, okay. I think it was. And it'd been yeah. like, sort of like 15, 16 years sort of thing. So they were obviously upset. I think that's where it was yeah, for yeah. that game. There's quite a lot of games we've done replays around then. I'm pretty sure that was that night. It must have yeah. been. Yeah, so it was obviously, they, sort of, they come to, to watch and sort of get, get away from it sort of thing. Yeah. So now it was nice. Yeah. So, Carl Sean at home, you said for the away game, you was going front post. This one, I believe, was back post. Can you yeah, describe well, it? I think it was, so obviously we played on the weekend. And then, as I said, there weren't exactly complex corners we were working anyway. And I think it poss it's possible that it was our second corner of the game. And after scoring on the weekend, they had someone blocking that run at the front post. So, yeah. we swapped over who did it. So, someone else made the front post run. And, and I mean, Carl are a very, very good footballing side. Yeah. Uh, they showed it, obviously, in the first game with the result, like coming back from, from being 3-0 down and then, and then having to come to us on the Monday night. Yeah. But it just seemed that there was a lot of space from set pieces in general. And obviously, we showed that with, with the goals that we scored. And yes, Jason, again, just sort of floated the ball to the back post. Fortunate for me, the runner's not come with me. And I'm sort of five yards out with a free header, with an open goal, because the goalkeeper's yeah. still at the front post. So, yes probably much much simpler to score the second one. And another thing that happened was when Hughesy took impact from Sam um, in the 80-ish yeah, so ish, ish minute. In yeah. I, I watched the replay back and you could see that you went up to him and you could tell there was something not, not right. Obviously, he played on, didn't he? Yeah, sort of looking at him, I think his initial responses to questions were either delayed or sort of strange responses. Yeah. And with my sort of dealing with concussion stuff in the past you could you could tell that he wasn't he wasn't his normal self and yeah. even though the importance of the game his health was much more important than what needs to yeah. go on so I, I like looking back at it, I think I recommended to him that he probably should go off fortunately we had a goalkeeper on the bench that could yeah. come on anyway which was obviously in, in a different situation you, you, you weigh it up but yeah we've got someone that plays his position on the bench they may be a bit less experienced, but we're 2-0 up with, as you say, with 10 minutes left. I think he did, he ended up going up, I think, didn't he? Yeah, he, he went off in the 90, just inside uh, stopping Yeah, so he ended up going off, but yeah, it was just sort of, it was, obviously it was 2-0 against a team in the league above, and it was shut up shop as it was anyway. Yeah. But yeah, once that happened, I think it was even more defend first, don't worry about the outcome of it, like if the ball yeah. bounces, the ball doesn't bounce, it goes away. Like you, you be careful with what's going on and you, you deal with what's put in front of you. Um, yeah. So he was, he went down to save a ball um, 
and one of our defenders was running like obviously back with him. Our defender got a push by the opponent and his shin pad sort of lodged upwards into Yuzi's mouth. Okay. Um, from there, it's obviously knocked his whole head back um, and he suffered concussion as a result. So, Steve, you, you went on to Husey. Did you know straight away? To be fair, I'll be, to- I'll be totally honest. With concussion, it's, it's, a very, it's a very difficult procedure and there's a lot of studies, like even Evan will tell you as well, because sometimes we're geeks and we like to look at articles. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's 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 sometimes with concussion it's the one where it comes straight on and there's the one where the delay onset comes and unfortunately at first we've done a, a range of tests with Husey so from there it'd be like the eye motion test while like going from left to right up and down yeah, yeah. pupils uh, but after doing all the tests he passed, he passed it, but it wasn't until that delayed onset where he was running around and the demand of oxygen yeah. from the brain a bit more that the concussion started to sink in. I don't remember the, any of the game. No. The home I literally don't remember any. The only thing I remember was uh, sitting in my missus car um, at the ground, just literally not having a clue where I was, saying... Yeah. Why am I in the car? What what was the score? I thought she was lying to me. He said we were two new up. I said no, honestly, like I, th- I think even really, Gibbo or Mocker yeah. mentioned that as well about yeah. You didn't I, know the I, score I don't remember any of it. <laughs> the only thing I remember actually was uh, Steve had some like Vaseline. Yeah. Put it on my lip, but apart from that, uh, no, I've got no clue. Do you yeah, do you remember? Go on, go on, John. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, it was at, like fifth. We had fifteen minutes to go because um, I remember it well, um, and I think their attacker and I think it was Sam yeah, yeah. coming in to the, to the 18 yard box and um, the ball was quite away from them you now it was quite loose and Dave decided to obviously made the decision to come out and smother the ball um, and obviously you know Sam and the other he, they've slid in um, it was quite nasty actually it was not nice to see yeah uh, what I remember of it was that you know Steve obviously come on the pitch to attend to Dave Um which obviously is a head injury. You're thinking, okay, with the protocols that are in place now, yeah, yeah we're going to have to sort of sub him off. And um, so I took a young uh, under 23s keeper at the time, Dan, uh, what's his name? Dan, 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 Dan yeah. Brockley. Um, so I took him round to the corner just to sort of warm him up a little bit in preparation for if Dave had to come off. Yeah. So um, I think Dave, you you played on for a good ten minutes. A good 10 minutes, yeah. sorry. And then you started feeling a little bit... You went a little bit... <laughs> I, had no, I had no idea where I was. Oh, right no, now. So, <laughs> so, so, so apparently, I think it was the 89th minute, um, Steve got called on again. And then, yeah, Dan, come on. And I think there was about eight minutes of... Yeah, uh, it was quite a bit out of time. Yeah, we were sort of... We was expecting... I don't mean no disrespect but to, to Dan, but, you know, we thought they were just going to be throwing balls into the yeah. box and you know because he he's not he wasn't the biggest not the biggest of goalkeepers tall you know, height wise or build and um we just thought they were just gonna absolutely smash him you know but they didn't do that and we didn't yeah. give them the opportunity to do that to be fair you know so um yeah it was it was a bit of a uh, yeah not long, good really how how long after the game did you know the extent of the injury? Um, so I went to hospital, um, had a CT scan. Uh, I literally I felt terrible for a couple of weeks. Like Good just, job. I couldn't even get. Uh, if I would get out of bed, I'd literally I'd walk to the to like the door, and then I'd just get back in bed. And I'd yeah. feel really dizzy. Just yeah, it's, it's bizarre. If you've never had concussion, like it's it's weird. Did you think really, you was going to really miss weird. a good few games or? Um, I knew you'd have to, I think the protocol is you have to miss two weeks. Um, I have had it before, but it's just, sometimes it takes a lot longer. Like people yeah. can suffer from it for like weeks on end, but other people it's, it's not a problem. But yeah, I just, 
I think I come back to training, sort of launched the ball in the air. I went to control it, and it bounced like ten yards away from me. I thought, yeah, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> so going that's on your, to that's your, that's your normal touch, though, Dave, isn't it? <laughs> the the only goal that captured the bench's uh, celebrations for the goal was this Carl Shelton game. After goal, the staff were up on their feet. The subs was that like that for every goal? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um... I don't, I don't like um, us uh, sitting on the, you know, on the sidelines. I'm, you have to be very focused. You know, I'm not, I'm not the type of person that gets overexcited about a goal. I don't run onto the pitch. I don't run halfway down the sideline. Yeah. Um. So we kept focus. Yes, the boys behind me got up and cheered. Not there. I don't know which one that was. Was that whose goal was that? Uh, Sykes's. George Sykes. Yeah. Was it a header? Um, header or was it a... Yeah, because uh, yeah, Gibbos was a header as well So I think it was both headers yeah. in that game Both headers? Well, they were probably excited that George Sykes scored a header Because that's <laughs> rare Probably about one or two years So, yeah, George... so, yeah um, the, the bond was there You know, the, the, the two young physios The two young lads I can't, I can't praise high enough And, and George and Jack yeah. You know, the goalkeeping coach. Uh, you know, the bond was there with the players. You know, I, I still have to keep myself a little bit away from from that from it, but I enjoy the crack with them. Uh, but from my view, you enjoy it. Yes, yes, you 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 get involved in the celebrations, but also you have to be very focused on the fact that um, as a manager, you have to keep a perspective as well. Perfect. So going on to Gibbo's goal, that's another corner scored. Um, I was going to ask you, was that um, worked on in training? But the game before, you said no. How much then does that show how much the team worked together? Well, like I said before, when you got when you got a, a young young lad who's got terrific feet from dead ball situations, if you if you cover the bases, if you get a, like like Gibbo can get a head start on somebody on a run, and it's a good delivery. You've got a chance, you know. You've got a chance, and um, 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 like I said, we never worked on it. But it was it, for me. I think I looked at, and um, we. I think somewhere we said to, to give oh, have a run around the back, have a run around the back. You know, get a run on the ball and go around yeah. the back, because they had overloaded the front post. And again, that's just people using their initiative um, on the pitch, which you, you expect them to do if they're if they're. If they're half decent, if they're good enough, sometimes players just use your initiative. You can't yeah. take credit for everything as a manager, and players can't take credit for everything as players. You know, and that was one instance where that's where it worked. So go going on to the last ten minutes, um, near where your bench is, Hughes has come to get the ball, and uh, their players pushed Sam over, and he's hit Hughesy. Um, I think at first we all thought he was okay. But obviously, it turned out he weren't. So leading up to when Hughes was going to come off, what was going through your head then? Um, who's going to go and go? Yeah, <laughs> we had a young lad who went and go for us on the night. Uh, but you don't usually use lose your goalkeeper. But we had the yeah. benefits of being at, with the benefits of being at home, so we could put a goalkeeper on the bench. Um, so that's what we did. But with um, with the tackle with. Sam getting pushed into um, Husey, I felt that it was a ridiculous challenge by the player. Yeah. Uh, it was dangerous. Um, I wasn't happy with his attitude when he came past the bench after he'd done it. He knew fine well what he'd done. And I, you know, I, I made sure the, go- the referee knew about it because it was dangerous. You know, yeah. no, he had no right to go for the ball. The ball was in, in Husey's hands. It was just malicious. It was ill-tempered because they were 2-0 down and they weren't getting back into the game. And yeah, it, it was a disappointment to lose Uzi at that time. But thankfully, we had enough time because obviously he was concussed. Yeah. Um, you know, he, and he had to go and have a few stitches in his in his lip, you know. And uh, but yeah, but that's that's football for you. That's that's what you you have to deal with all types of stuff in football and the physicality side of it, I, I would never want to be taken out uh, of the game whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, but 
you know, sometimes it can border on dangerous, and that's, that was one of them instances, you know. Just just touching on Dan, that was his debut for the club when he came on. Did yeah. you say anything to him before that? Kind of let them score, you know. Yeah. Um, just relax. If it, it, at that time in that game, we were Hughesy again wasn't under a lot of pressure, but there wasn't a lot of time left in the game. So yeah. we just didn't want the boy, young boy, to be nervous. We really didn't. We wanted him to go out and enjoy it. Uh, and you know, just take the emphasis off, take that, that off him, yeah. and put the, you know, and, and that was it really, you know, uh, and it worked out in the end for us. On Saturday the 11th of January 2020, Avery travelled to Hornchurch in the second round. This was a 2-1 victory, goals from Shad Nagandu and Harry Gibbs. Again, it's a pretty an, an ordinary header, but obviously is to, to get in the position we were. Obviously, we got the fortunate to get the free kick in the first place. Well, well obviously the, the red card that come from it. Yeah. Um, and then for that set piece was actually the first time I was marked by a different player due to the red card. Yep. So they 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 mixed up who was marking who. So it was actually a different centre back. They played three at the back. Yeah. And it was a different centre back mark to me for that set piece and the rest of the game. And then after that, I scored. It was the same player marking. So it was a different player just for that yeah. exact moment. So obviously the ball's coming originally being cleared out. And then, yeah, I mean, we know obviously with John playing right back, it was the, 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 his instinct is to put the ball back in anyway. Yeah. So I've kept myself in a good position. And unfortunately, the ball sort of floated over this defender in front of me and I had the run on the defender behind me and it's very, yeah. very difficult for the keeper to come and claim it. So I just sort of glanced and held on the front post. So you said, obviously, you, you stayed up there. Was you thinking, should I go back into the normal position, back on the halfway line? Or did you um, did you really want to stand the box? I mean, I'd say probably through the recent game and scoring the two goals previously in the previous rounds, I think... Going off of that, even even Keith would have probably urged me to stay forwards yep. at that point in the game with the chance the ball is coming back into the box, purely on the fact that we should have been organised defensively from the free kick anyway. Because, yes, yeah, so, so the defenders that were back would have stayed back. They wouldn't have pushed yep. forward even when the ball got cleared. So, yes, I think, and and it was sort of every time we did get a set piece, he, we, were, we were being pushed up to go and attack the ball and, Try and score a goal. So yeah, I don't. Yeah, it wasn't really. Maybe once the ball was out of play, or um, yeah, it was cleared. Then that would be the point where I get back. But yeah, at that point in the game, maybe yeah, on sort of the goal scoring form with the confidence I had, I, I yeah. wouldn't have thought of going back before then. So the outcome was of the match was you scored the winner against the locals. How did that feel for you? I mean, obviously. You, most people would have seen the celebration afterwards. Obviously, me and Sykes, he ran into the corner, going yeah. to the fans. I mean, it's always nice to score a goal. And I mean, the fact that we'd already made history for Avery anyway, getting that yeah. far in the competition. And it was, it, it all sort of got a bit a bit surreal anyway, purely on the, the fact that we'd got that far. Obviously, we earned a good amount of money for the club. Like, we we good set of boys around us. And it was almost, yeah. most, we were already living off the bonuses of the cup anyway. So it was just, like we'd got further than we'd planned to. Like we, the focus was always going to be the league, but yeah. then you're not gonna, you're not going to turn down the opportunity to go that far in a competition that the club never really been in. You didn't score, but you was captain. How did it feel that the gaffer gave you the role to be captain and you led the team onto victory? Yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's nice. It's nice. Nice to be captain, but. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. I mean, other um, than that, <laughs> yeah. in yeah. in the change rooms before, did you did you say anything to the boys before you got nah, up? No, no, I don't really say much. I don't. I leave it for the the hollerers, the people who do all the talking. I leave it. I'm I'm more one or two people I speak to at, at a certain time and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the way I do it.
Um, normally you are the last player to walk out. This time you was first. How did that feel? No different. No different. It was nice to see. Obviously, it felt like a big game. You know, you obviously got our clan of supporters in the in a little corner. Yeah. And you got all the Hunchurch fans. It felt like a big game. So that that felt nice. I probably wouldn't have noticed that if I was at the back. Yeah. Because I'm more focused on myself. But um, yeah, it's nice. Withers was injured. He didn't play. Did he give yeah. you any words of encouragement or advice before the game? Me personally? Yeah. Uh, no, no. Um, nah, he, to the team he did, though. He gave us a nice, yeah. nice speech, yeah. Again, another team in Division Above. Mm -hmm. How much preparation went into that? Hornchurch was different to Taunton because Taunton we knew nothing about, whereas Hornchurch, me and Jack knew a lot about. Um, as you're aware, my brother plays for him. Yeah. Um, a lot of our friends play for him. A lot of ex forward players, when me and Jack come from, play for him. We're quite good mates with Stimo, the manager. He was the sort of guy who'd give us our, our first job as a reserve manager. Um, he was quite close to us. He was like a mentor to us. So you go from not knowing anything to knowing everything. Yeah. Um, and it worked in our favour in a sense. So I remember saying to Keith on the day, as long as we get the team sheet out, um, we'll know what shape they're in because depending on the players and stuff like that, don't get me wrong, we were quite lucky in the fact that they had three or four injuries that weekend as well. So everything was just set up for us nicely. We knew what shape they were in. We knew that they were missing their captain and a few others. And yeah, it was another great game, proper cup game again, penalties, red cards. Um, but yeah, we knew everything about Hornchurch. We really helped. And I suppose they knew everything about us. They come and yeah. watch the the Cole Shorten game and stuff like that. Whether it's only been down the road, you do know a lot of the players, you know a lot of the way the team plays and stuff like that. So that was just a pure battle over at Hornchurch. But it was a really good, really good one, to be fair. Throughout the cup run, was the pre-game warm-up always the same? Or did you change depending who you was playing? Yeah, no, to be fair, uh, it's always the same. Um, one thing Keith did add in was in the changing room, every round somebody else would speak. So he'd say yeah. his bit and leave. One time it was me, the next time I think it was Connor Witherspoon. One time it was Richo and I think uh, Notts County it was Tog. So he says his bit and he leaves, then he leave, he'll, he'll tell you the, the day before you're going to have the last 40 seconds, get him in a huddle and get him G'd up. And that's the only thing we did different to say a league game day. Um, but yeah, it was pretty much similar, mate, if I'm honest. Hornchurch is always a big game, whether it's League Cup, home or away. But how big was Hornchurch away in the cup? Hornchurch, it, I must admit, when um, we played Carl Schulte in the previous round, and obviously the draw was made again before that replay. Yep. Um, and the draw was a bit of a nightmare draw for all three teams, really, Carl Schulte and us and Hornchurch, because the only winners out of it were the winners. You know, it yep. was... It was teams that you usually come up against. And in the trophy, it's lovely to play against teams that you never come across. That's my view anyway. Um, to draw home church, uh, local derby, a lot of interest, yeah. Uh, there, there would be a, a good game. Would I have liked it at home? Massively, because I think that would have given us a bit of an edge. So yeah. going there was always going to be difficult. Um, I played for home church twice, two periods in my career. So I've got a, a long affinity with, with the club over there. Um, and yeah, it was uh, going back and seeing people that we've known for a long while. So it yeah. was always going to be a, a very difficult game for us, but really a no-win situation from them because yeah. they, on paper, should beat us. We had nothing to lose, really. So, so a question that keeps on coming up is the celebrations. And Hornchurch was when Gibbo's goal went in and the final whistle was a big celebration. How how much did them celebrations show the club how close the fans and players were? Oh, massively, yeah. It, uh, we we took uh, a lot of fans over at Home Church, more than I, than I envisaged taking. Um, you know, great support, and it, it just showed the unity of, of the players with the supporters. You know, there is great camaraderie between between the lads and and the fans, as shown before and after games in the bar at Parkside. And um, yeah, it was a, it was a great day all round. From the first to the final whistle, the support was unreal. Um, was it hard to keep the support going against them, them Hornchurch fans? I'd like to say 
it was hard because obviously we were totally outnumbered. But there isn't a, there is no love, I suppose, between the two clubs. Um, so it's a case of it's a local derby, whether it's league, whether it's league or not. Yeah, we want to beat them. We want to beat them. Um, when the draw came out, it was probably a case of not necessarily dread, but you look at it going, oh, we could have had some someone better, a bigger tie for us. But going into it, knowing that by this point we we'd beaten Taunton home and home and away, obviously over two legs, and um, we'd played Carl Shelton, who were there or thereabouts with Hornchurch in their league, and we'd beaten them in the second leg and probably should have beaten them in the first leg because we were three 0 up at one point. Um, so it was a case of if we play football, we can beat them. The issue comes into the pitch there isn't necessarily the greatest. It's January, it's been yeah. raining. So it, it didn't, the conditions weren't great for us. But I think we, in regards to the the fans, because we knew what the boys could do, because we knew at this point we've had, we'd had away trips, Taunton, Car Schultz and Big, Biggles Wade, we'd been away at East Grinstead. We knew that what the boys would, would be like on um, grass pitches as well as playing at home in 3G. We just went and played the game. Like yeah. some people, they play, they say, and it's an old adage in football, don't play the occasion, play the game. And we certainly did. Um, I, I think that probably played a factor into the early, early in the second half of them getting a red card. Um, yeah. Because I think the guy's gone in high. If it's a normal game, he probably doesn't make the tackle. But because he's yeah. playing for a team in a local derby, he's probably gone in the way he has. It's a clear red for me. Um, I've seen, so after the game, I saw the the um, the injury to Jason's leg as well, obviously because he had a cut and so on from where, yeah. where he'd been he, he'd been stood. Um, and then from that, it's a mass massive two minutes because we, we we take the free kick wide out on our left. The ball gets cleared out to our right fullback. Um, it's get or right before back area, should I say, gets laid back into John and Zengo for him to cross it, and Harry scores the winner. Yeah. It may only be sort of 53, 54 minutes in, but there's no more goals in the game, and that's, yeah. that's the winning goal. So that sort of two minutes or so was massive. Um, <clears throat> Hornchurch did come back into the game a little bit. Um, they had chances, but similarly to, to Taunton and similarly to Carl Shulton, we never thought we would concede again. Yeah. We never thought we would get the equalise, and it's just a case of the game's done. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think I think the celebrations after knowing that the bar itself at Hornchurch isn't the isn't the biggest of facilities. It was a case yeah. of right, let's get changed and let's go back to Parkside because we we're only ten minutes away. So we yeah. went back and there was a few drink, like drinks laid on and stuff from the board, which is nice of them. And we had a bit of a celebration, which was which was excellent. Both fans, <clears throat> players, management, board all together. Hornchurch away in the cup. How much did that mean to everyone that game? It meant it meant a lot to the people at the club, um, more than more than the players and myself, I think it, it meant a lot to the club because obviously it's the local rivals. It's yeah. it's a club who have gone up. It's a club who've got in Hornchurch who've got ambitions. Um, you know, uh, and there's history between the two clubs, which there is, which it always is in the, in, in the area. So again, it was another away day for us. Which seemed to be a pattern that was emerging, yeah. um, and but I enjoyed it. It was just around the corner from me. Um, on the day, it was a real, it was a real Essex Cup tie. It really was. It, it was a humdinger of a game. We knew the pitch wasn't being wasn't going to be in good shape, and we knew there was there was going to be a little bit of needle in the game. It's the best way to describe it. And the build up to the game again. Thursday night, we went into training, and we just we done our we done our normal. You know, we we had a five say. We made it enjoyable for the players. We took the emphasis off the game afterwards. We went to the bar, and I think at that time the players were having a pint or two in the bar on a Thursday night together. Yeah. Whereas I, I would shoot off and have a Chinese, and I would leave George and Jack with them. Yeah. They, they, they'd play some sort of card game, so they'd all they'd all stay behind and. And talk about football, I'd leave them to it. And yeah, the, the build up to that game was obviously now that it started to get more and more important, as it would do. Yeah. And the fact that it was the local rivals, it was it was a great draw for us. Again, it was another it was another game for the players to pit themselves against the team from a higher league and see what we were all about, you know. 
So you did just mention about training, but the preparation side of things, as in seeing Hornchurch play in that, how much detail did that go into? Not particularly, not a lot, not a lot. Um, we knew the players. Uh, the fact that George Christie's brother played for Hornchurch. Yeah. The fact that Goody had played for Hornchurch. So we knew the players. One thing that... One thing that I, that I did in the cup run, the, the further down the further down the line you get in the trophy, um, somebody has to go in and sit with them, talk to the referee, and to hand over the team sheets. Yeah. And I give that I give that role to George because on the day, um, George knew their team, and we thought they would go maybe four four two or four four three three. Uh, what we wanted them to do, we wanted them to go three at the back. Um, it's the way we were playing at that period of time when we came up against teams. Two lads, I spoke to them about where we played, how we played against three centre halves, and they picked it up terrifically. But we had a game plan that if they, the only time I sort of said to the players, "What do you think of this?" Long story short, George Christie came back straight away for the team talk and said, uh, three centre halves." So our, we knew what to do straight away. Yeah. And um, it worked. It worked on the day. Obviously, um, it was a bit of a dubious penalty decision. It was penalty. They got back into it with the, with the penalty, which was a handball. Which at halftime, I had a bit of a go. At, I had a bit of a go to two centre halves, especially Harry Gibbs, about getting getting pushed back into our into the eighteen yard box. We wanted them to be high to get the big lad out of the box, and. Again, second half we went out on a on a not great pitch and scored a terrific goal with Gibbo. Um, but we knew again, touching on it, but we knew that one or two of their players had a short fuse. Yeah. Um, and we knew, especially just before half time, one of their one of their lads went through the back of our fullback, and you could hear. It. And I said the referee going into half time, you heard that challenge. That was late. It was dangerous. And it was more than a yellow card. And he agreed with me. So I thought they're they're treading on a fine line to finish the game with eleven men. So I just said to my boys, listen, we'll if we finish this game with eleven players, um, we'll win it. Yeah. And I didn't I couldn't see them, I couldn't see the way the game was going that the the, t- the tempo of the game on the pitch, they were getting more frustrated. I couldn't see them finishing with ten with a, with eleven players, and they did. The man sent off ridiculously in yeah. front of us, and that was a turning point in the game. I thought that gave the boys confidence that what we we're telling them at half time actually, you know, happened, yeah. and that also that also can give them confidence as well. Just touching on the team wise to that, um, you did have to make a change to the. FA Trophy team, and that was Connor getting injured. How much of a difference was that going to make? Um, yes, he got the injury. He got injured at uh, Malden uh, with his groin. Um, but again, we never went looking. We, you know, we had a I had a player in Chad who can sometimes come across quite lackadaisical, but we sort of said to him, I sort of said to Chad. One thing he was good at was penalties. Yeah. You know, he was very good at penalties, Shell, very good at it. And that's an art in itself. The only time I had a bit of a goal was when he missed one subway. Yeah. Um, but I felt that I didn't ask him to do what Connor could do because sometimes it's impossible to ask him to do that. Uh, it was key that Goody at that time was fit alongside him. So I had a ball winner in there. And I'd obviously, who, who didn't get enough. Uh, Praised during that period as well it was a uh, young Wan on the on the right, yeah. Wan Reid, you know, he, he he had to do more workload as well because of Connor being out on that right hand side as one of the bookends. But Shad came into the team, uh, and done uh, done really well, done really well uh, in a physical game. He stood up to it, Chad, and I just said to him, "Listen, I'm, I'm not going to ask you to go and win balls in the air, but what, I, what I'll ask you to do is when you can time a ball, is keep it for me." Yeah. and find the pass because that's what his game was about and he did it <laughs>